When people think of the City University of New York, they most likely have the university's 11 senior colleges and seven community colleges in mind, and perhaps its professional schools, law, medical, journalism schools, for example. But the graduate programs CUNY offers are far more wide ranging than that, and many of them are brought together at the CUNY Graduate Center located at 34th Street and 5th Avenue. What kinds of degrees are offered there? How does it work, given that a number of CUNY's four-year colleges offer master's degrees? And what contributions does the Graduate Center make to the social and cultural life of New York City? Here to answer these questions is Dr. Robin Garrell, who just last summer became the president of the CUNY Graduate Center. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. So what exactly is the Graduate Center? So the Graduate Center is really a unique way of doing graduate education. You can think about it as a graduate school, which many large universities have, but we are geographically distributed across multiple campuses. We are the doctoral degree granting arm of CUNY, which was founded 60 years ago. Um, we are not the only doctoral granting entity, but we award nearly all of the PhDs. So anyone who is working on a PhD within the system is going to have some kind of interaction with the Graduate Center. They'll have some kind of interaction, that's correct. Um, the only degrees that are offered uh, on other, uh, by other entities uh, are the PhD in public health by the School of Public Health and uh, the engineering and clinical psychology degrees at, um, at City College, uh, but they interface with us. But you also, you also offer master's degrees, correct? We offer master's degrees en route to uh, the PhD. And just a few years ago, we began offering uh, additional master's degree programs um, in areas such as uh, data visualization, for example. But you would have sort of the standard um, master's and PhD program in the, the liberal arts and in some of the right. sciences. Okay. Right. Um, you know, CUNY TV has its offices on the first floor of the Graduate Center, as you know. Um, and in the 13 years that I've been going in and out of the building, I've offered, wondered what was going on on the other floors. Uh, you have, tell me, you, 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 so P, there are actual classrooms there, you have auditoriums, you have uh, exhibition rooms. That's correct, we have all those things, but you know, we're, we're one building and there are several thousand graduate students, close to 3000 uh, who are enrolled at the Graduate Center. So a lot of the work that they do, particularly their research as doctoral students, takes place out on the other campuses or out in the field. So we're involved very much uh, physically in the early stages of doctoral students' careers while they're uh, taking classes. But as they go on to engage in teaching as adjunct instructors or teaching assistants, they're out on other campuses. They're working with research faculty across the system. They're doing field work, um, so, so many other things. So someone who applies for a PhD in English, for example, would they be connected, would they have um, a senior college as their base and, or would they be doing most of their courses at the Graduate Center? Does everybody have a senior college as their base? Um, most, not all. So um, it's helpful to understand where the faculty are. So the Graduate Center itself has about 130 of what we call central line faculty. Their primary appointments are at the Graduate Center, their offices are there and so on. But then we have oh, on the order of 15, 1800 consortial faculty. These are faculty dispersed throughout the system on all the campuses who can mentor graduate students or, or serve as instructors for graduate level courses. So depending on um, you know, what stage a student is at in their career and where their base is. Uh, they might be doing some of their work physically at the Graduate Center, but also on the campuses. And the same is true for the faculty. How long does it take to get a PhD on average? It varies a lot by field. Um, ideally, you know, we, we fund students with five-year packages, so that, that's a goal. Some finish in less. In some areas, nationwide, it takes longer just by the nature of the work. So if you have to learn multiple languages, for example, or if you're engaged in field work in areas such as anthropology. Um, but generally in the sciences, um, I should mention the ASRC, the Advanced Science Research Center is also part of the Graduate Center. It's located 
uh, near City College. Uh, lots of our students are doing work there. You know, sciences students more commonly take on the order of four to maybe five and a half years. Okay. Now you spent nine years as vice provost of the graduate division at UCLA. So you know a lot about graduate students. Um, and students who are in PhD programs are usually preparing for the academic life. I remember when I was in college and graduate school, it was sort of common knowledge that finding a full-time job in academia was difficult. But the mantra was that, okay, at some point, the then current crop of professors would retire and jobs would open up for the new crop. But from what I can tell, it seems to be just as hard, if not harder, to get full-time work in academia as it was 30 years ago. Is that the case? It's true. <laughs> so, you know, there was the great expansion that happened in the, in the early 60s and, and Many of those folks have retired, but not all. Um, but you know, you, you could go back in, in the newspapers and read about uh, what's often called the crisis of humanities. It goes back decades, right? So jobs have always been scarce in those fields. In the Graduate Center, historically, its strengths have been in humanities and social sciences. We award uh, the second highest number of doctoral degrees in humanities and arts in the country we're behind just the University of Chicago. So that is our historic strength. So our students are very successful in getting jobs. More than 60% uh, find jobs that involve uh, teaching and research in academia. But you know, students' aspirations varied and it's always varied by field and student goals, um, where, where they end up. M my goal was to become uh, an industrial chemist. So here I am, things change. But you spent years teaching and then you became an administrator. What was the attraction of going from teaching to administrative work? Ooh. Part of it is that, um, well, since I'm a chemist, uh, you know, chemist strengths are analysis and synthesis. And uh, early on, like many early mid-career faculty, you know, I got a little taste of administration by serving on various committees and the college and so on. And what I found I really liked doing um, amongst, in addition to my research, was meeting my colleagues from across the campus uh, and being able to identify um, problems that were amenable to system level solutions. And so um, I, I found that being able to put different pieces together uh, by identifying a maybe elements of solutions in different parts of campus was really fun and could be transformational. Um, so that, that just sort of kept me going. Are there more or fewer students entering PhD programs now compared to say 20 years ago? And what are the most popular degree areas? So doctoral programs um, nationally have grown somewhat, worldwide growing a lot because many uh, uh, nations have really expanded their higher education. Uh, China's a good example. Um, what's really interesting is that if you go back uh, through the various economic cycles, typically in a recession, uh, enrollments in graduate education, both masters and doctorals, increases. Students see that as, uh, well, first of all, jobs may be scarce, so they can turn higher ed, but they see that as a way of advancing their skills and their opportunities and, and their potential they become more marketable. What's really remarkable in this recession um, is that not only have master's programs proved very resilient. In CUNY itself, um, our applications and enrollments in master's degrees has grown about 5%, even while enrollments in community colleges has shrunk significantly. What's astonished me is we just looked at our admissions numbers and the applications this year for CUNY doctoral programs are up 17%. And in areas that, well, to your point in the arts, in philosophy, they're up 36%. This is astonishing and remarkable. And it speaks, it speaks to uh, really the strength of our programs, the attractiveness of, of CUNY as, as a as a transforming entity in graduate education for individuals and for our, our region. If you talk about the popular degree areas, what are they? At, at CUNY, at the Graduate Center, the biggest programs are in biology. Uh, no, no big surprise there. 
English, a historic strength for us. Um, music, very large program in music. And psychology, uh, okay. popular nationwide. You hear about the, the huge debt. Every day you hear about the huge debt that uh, students, coming out of, or students are coming out of college with. Um, so if you then factor in the additional cost and time off work of getting a graduate degree, um, so what would you say to a college senior who's thinking about applying to a PhD program? So the first thing I would say is that for nearly all doctoral students in PhD programs, you are paid. So you're not incurring more debt, or if you are, it's incremental for most. Um, CUNY has an amazing system. It's really the envy of many other states. I'm coming from California, which has progressively defunded higher education. In CUNY, the state underwrites tuition. So you're not paying tuition. And in addition, many of our students, most of them, are uh, they receive a stipend or employment opportunity. So they're serving as uh, an adjunct instructor, or they're working in a research lab, or they're receiving a fellowship, which doesn't have work attached to it. So we really try to minimize uh, additional debt that students accrue while a doctoral student. The other thing in CUNY is the master's tuition is really cheap compared with our uh, peers, Columbia, NYU. You get the same quality education, the same professional advancement for a fraction of the cost. So that's what I would say. Think about graduate education in CUNY. What made you come to leave UCLA at Sunny Climb and to come to the Graduate Center? So, uh, you know, I'm a product of public education from, from the very beginning. I, I was, uh, I went to Cornell's undergraduate, but I was in the state school. I, I went to Michigan. My first faculty job was at Pittsburgh. Uh, so I'm completely committed and deeply dedicated to the mission of public higher education uh, as the transformational engine. It, it's an engine of socioeconomic opportunity. Uh, it advances equity. Um, it, it's an amazing thing. It's, it's a great thing for our society. So uh, UCLA uh, recently was ranked as, as the number one public uh, institution in, in the United States. It's, it's an amazing place. Um, and, and I've been involved in graduate education for, for many years and advancing that as a real differentiator for students. So graduate education is increasingly important for students you know, uh, as they prepare for diverse careers. How do CUNY's graduate students uh, compare to those at UCLA? Are they different? Are they pretty much the same? Well, that was really one of the attractors for me. Um, the fact that um, the undergraduate population that we draw upon is actually more diverse still. And they, um, they have a particular interest in, uh, for many of them, in staying in the region. And they have an interest in public impact research. So that was one of the attractors uh, for me for CUNY. It's the way the institution um, resonates with the city, um, not only for workforce preparation, but the kinds of research that we do, focusing on issues such as health disparities, um, opportunities to um, address really big public policy challenges in incarceration and community services and public administration, um, the arts and the public. So all those things are areas that the Graduate Center has had an impact in for decades. Um, and so what a great opportunity to help, um, you know, the city uh, advance and, and frankly to recover uh, from the current situation. Are the discoveries that you've made here, you've only been here, I guess, since last summer, um, are the discoveries that you've made that surprised you? Well, sure. So I would say, you know, I come from a really big system. Uh, in terms of scale, the, the University of California system and CUNY are not very different. But what is different is that CUNY cuts across all sectors, right? It's community colleges, um, the senior college and the graduate center. So the consortium model, how it actually functions, and maybe we'll talk a little bit about that, is for me, it's really exciting. I think it's a model for urban graduate education nationally and worldwide. And it's not widely known, uh, but it's also very complicated. Um, and finally, I would say it's, it's the commitment that people have to the mission. It's extraordinary. So 
some months, not that long after you got here, the pandemic hit and sort of shut down much of the life on campuses at any rate. What kind of, uh, did that off, did that pose particular challenges for you or the Graduate Center? Sure, um, so I say I, I came in August. So a lot of the really heavy lifting in terms of adapting to remote instruction happened before I came. What was amazing was the fact that the nature of the Graduate Center in CUNY made the transition much easier than many other places. We have a long uh, established and extraordinary teaching and learning center that already was working with faculty and graduate students to prepare them for, um, to use technology effectively and to engage remote instruction. So we were ready to help people transition. And that was really, really important. Another thing that was really important was our ability to um, mobilize support from donors and friends, as well as you know, the CARES Act uh, from, from Congress to provide emergency funding for our students. Um, and this past fall, you know, the, there are ongoing needs, right? Students whose research has been disrupted by the pandemic, they can't do field work, they can't work with human subjects. For months, many couldn't even go into their labs or access archives if you're humanist. So we worked really hard with our, our alumni and donor community to create research continuity grants to help our students maybe reframe their questions to use, um, to pay someone to access archives for them or to have proxy researchers or to really shift the focus of their research so they could um, you know, adapt the way they're approaching their problems, accessing databases and other things. So that's helped our students keep going, make progress, and ideally not take much longer than they plan to to complete their doctoral degrees. Um, you know, I've often wondered about, you know, uh, the, those who are in the, you know, the hard sciences who need to do the, the lab work and sort of like, how do you do that um, uh, in a pandemic? Are they, are, are your science students, are they able to go into laboratories but just fewer now than before? How does that work? Well, there's some stuff that you could do that um, is always on our to-do list, like catching up on writing papers and analyzing data and doing that, so writing proposals for fellowships and grants. Happily, our Advanced Science Research Center uh, has been able to ramp up to 50% occupancy. They recently had to back up a little bit because of COVID cases, um, but they maintain their animal facilities. They have a really great schedule for students to come in, the faculty and technicians, um, so that they're uh, social distancing um, and really able to sustain the work. And that's true on the campuses as well, um, as we've been able to ramp up uh, reopening, um, just scheduling that lab time so people can go to the bench and, and do their work. You mentioned that one of the unique aspects of the Graduate Center, it's that it's part of a consortium. Can you elaborate on that? Sure. The Graduate Center provides all the administrative infrastructure from admissions through the awarding of degrees for the entire system, uh, financial aid, student support services, and so on. Um, so we end up coordinating about 40 uh, doctoral programs. This makes it much easier for campuses because they don't need to replicate all these different components, um, which is, uh, can be expensive, so there's an economic efficiency, as well, it provides a way for students to have an entree through the Graduate Center and access to thousands of faculty across the entire system. So the breadth of faculty they get to work with, the way that faculty get to interact with one another um, is, is unique and incredibly powerful through the consortial model. What do you see as the purpose of a public urban graduate education now? Um, should it be geared to where the jobs are? I mean, science versus humanity, uh, more geared towards technical fields. So as I mentioned, the Grad Center's historic strength is humanities and social sciences, but um, we've always had the, the so-called hard sciences and with the ASRC being part of our, our portfolio, um, that's really getting stronger. We have always prepared students for the academy and we'll continue to do that. Many of our students become 
the instructional workforce at our community colleges and at the senior colleges and high schools. That remains important. But we're very much on board with the Chancellor's Workforce Initiative, working with employers to prepare um, over the next few years, 25,000 CUNY graduates to work in the New York uh, metropolitan region. And that means all fields. So what we know and what we want to build on is the fact that um, a student who gets a PhD in linguistics or psychology might become a key player at Google or LinkedIn um, or at a hedge fund. You know, there, there are many opportunities. So there's the doctoral piece. As well, we're building out master's programs in fields that are emerging, data visualization. We have a brand new program that our faculty just approved, so I hope the trustees will approve it as well, um, a certificate program in data science. This is important whether you're in public administration or public health or in hedge funds. It's, it's a huge field. It's an emerging field. And it's a certificate that someone who's already in the workforce could take on. And if they got excited about it, they wanted to go further, they could ladder that and build it into a master's degree and then go on further. So that's all part of, of the ecosystem of graduate education writ large in a way that could really transform um, the New York City region in terms of the economic recovery, but also attracting employers to the city. Do most of your students come from uh... Have they gone to CUNY colleges or do you, what percentage come from out of state, out of the city? It's a real mix. So as uh, an institution with a national reputation, an international one, uh, we draw applicants from around the globe. Um, the composition of each program varies. Uh, so in urban education, we're drawing primarily regionally. Um, in areas like philosophy, we draw applicants worldwide. Our actual student population, it's about a quarter, a little bit more international. It's um, about uh, maybe 40% out of state, if you include those. So uh, we're pulling from all over. We wanna compete for uh, the best talent. Uh, but what we also see is that wherever they came from, the majority of our students actually stay in the state. And so they're contributing to the tax base and our extraordinary workforce. So that again speaks to CUNY as an engine for, um, for the economy in New York. You have a background in diversity and inclusion. How is the Graduate Center doing on those scores? We're doing okay. So I would say um, in terms of uh, raw numbers, we are, similar in our population to other doctoral institutions around the country. Um, and that you could say, well, that's okay, that's good. But like most other doctoral institutions, we don't mirror the population of our undergraduates or of the region. So we're working hard to do a couple of things. One is to reach students early on at the community colleges and in freshman years at the senior colleges to have them thinking about why doctoral education might be for them. And we do that through our students who are in the classrooms. Uh, we're working to um, create more fellowships that make CUNY more competitive in competing for diverse students who have opportunities around the country. So we want to uh, make CUNY the destination for um, students who see this as a place that could really transform their lives. So there's work to do. I know the, the Graduate Center, which is a, it's a wonderful, wonderful building, even though I haven't explored the other floors very much, but you have uh, auditoriums for, 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 for concerts, you have exhibition halls. Um, do you have a lot of activities that uh, bring in people outside of the you know, academic community? We do, we have, we have incredible public programming uh, effort, um, not only while we were in person, but now uh, remotely. So give an example, um, Ruth Gilmore Wilson uh, gave a public talk. We attracted 13,000 people through Facebook and in person. We host public events for uh, public city officials, uh, state officials, the James Gallery, we host many exhibits and concerts, of course. 
one of my goals um, over the coming months is to enhance the visibility of the Graduate Center for the public that walks by that magical corner at 34th and 5th. Uh, we're gonna transform it into a space where they can see images of research. What is the Graduate Center? What are we doing and how are we impacting the city? So we plan to showcase the work that our graduate students are doing um, that is visually appealing and really amazing. We have about a minute left. If you could tell us in that time, what else is on your bucket list for the Graduate Center? Most importantly, uh, ensuring that we're contributing to the value that CUNY brings to the city, transforming students' lives, not only at the undergraduate level, but into graduate education, uh, advancing the workforce, um, really doing research that can change the city and making sure that um, people know and understand that CUNY is for them. And um, we have lots of work, great work to do together and I'm just happy to be here. And I look forward to getting back into the, the building <laughs> once the pandemic is over. And, and I will see you there. <laughs> All right. I'm afraid we're out of time. I want to thank Dr. Robin Garrell, president of the CUNY Graduate Center for joining us today. Also to learn about our upcoming shows, be sure to follow us on Twitter at one to one CUNY TV. For the City University of New York and one to one, I'm Cheryl McCarthy. <laughs>